Hey friends, let's dive into something big today because there's a lot to unpack. Community spaces are crucial. They're where we come together, express ourselves, and share our creativity. And for Affinity, it's been a central platform for the furry community for years. But recently, Fur Affinity has been going through some changes, and these changes have raised a lot of questions. So today we're tackling the big one. Is Fur Affinity in trouble? And if so, what does that mean for the rest of us? For those of you who aren't familiar, Fur Affinity has been one of the most important platforms for furry artists, writers, and fans alike. It's where people go to share their work, interact with the community, and for some of them, even run their businesses. But right now, Fur Affinity's future feels shaky. There's been a fundraising campaign, sudden bans on certain types of content, and growing frustration within the community. So let's break it all down and figure out what's really happening here. First, I think we need to start with the recent GoFundMe campaign. This campaign has raised $216,000 after fees. Now, it was originally launched to cover operational costs, debts, and to support Dragoneer's family after his tragic passing. Now, this sounds pretty straightforward. People were, and still are, donating to keep Fur Affinity running. The team behind the GoFundMe even promised not to increase the goal, despite finding more debts. The furry community, doing what they do best, came together to save the platform, and it seemed like everything was on the right track. Now, fast forward to a few days ago, Fur Affinity began enforcing sudden bans on certain types of content, particularly baby fur art and age regression pieces. These bans didn't seem to align with Fur Affinity's own upload policy, which has always allowed for certain types of non-sexual content in the past featuring these themes. And while these two events aren't directly connected, they paint a troubling picture. The community came together to help save Fur Affinity, and now some of those very same users are being targeted by policy enforcement that feels inconsistent and unfair. It raises a huge question. What's really going on with Fur Affinity? Now, before we dive any deeper, let's tackle the question that's probably floating around in the back of your mind. What exactly is a baby fur? Oh boy. Baby furs are part of the adult baby diaper lover community, also known as ABDL. Yes, that's actually a thing. Basically, it's a group of adults who find comfort in revisiting their childhood through activities like regression, and yes, this sometimes includes wearing diapers and playing with kids' toys. You're getting the picture now, right? I know what you're thinking. That sounds a little unusual. But hey, furries don't exactly win the most normal hobby award either. The truth is, it's a community that arguably is even more misunderstood than furries. And look, while it might not be everybody's cup of tea, if it's not hurting anyone, why should it matter? Respecting each other's quirks is kind of the name of the game around here, isn't it? I mean, have you seen the front page of FA lately? Listen, I rest my case. Let's take a look at the key events. August 20th through the 28th, 2024. Fur Affinity announced a domain hijacking incident shortly after the passing of Dragoneer, but assured everyone that their data was secure. This was also just days after the GoFundMe reached its goal. September 1st through the 6th, 2024. Fur Affinity posted a detailed breakdown of how the funds from the GoFundMe were being used. 40,000 went to Dragoneer's mother, 19,350 for keeping the platform running, and so on. Now, it's important to remember here that this is all being handled by a small team of volunteers, but transparency is still very important when it comes to this amount of money. September 17th, 2024. Fur Affinity started banning baby fur content and age regression art. Now, according to some users, this looked like a targeted purge to clean up the platform, and it felt like it was coming out of nowhere. People were asking, why now? Why suddenly crack down on content that's been allowed for years? So let's dig into these recent bans because there's a lot that doesn't add up. Fur Affinity's own upload policy clearly outlines rules around content. And these bans seem to directly contradict that policy. Content rating guidelines and selective enforcement. Fur Affinity divides content into general, mature, and adult categories. And in those categories, it specifically states that mature content can include non-sexual or light fetish themes. So why then are users getting banned for non-sexual baby fur or age regression content? Well, according to the policy, this content should fit within the mature category. But it feels like Fur Affinity is suddenly moving the goalposts on what's acceptable without warning. Vagueness and Broad Interpretation Section 2.7 of the policy bans content featuring minors in sexual contexts, which makes a ton of sense, but it also allows room for non-sexual depictions like birth or breastfeeding. 
The recent bans, however, seem to interpret this rule a bit more broadly, going after non-sexual age regression art and baby fur content that doesn't appear to violate these guidelines. So is Fur Affinity using this vague language to justify purging content in a bid to sanitize the platform? Penalties and escalation. The policy also outlines a clear penalty structure. Section 7.1 says that users should be given warnings before facing more serious consequences like suspensions or bans. But that didn't happen here. Users were banned without warning. If Fur Affinity is skipping its own escalation process, then something has clearly gone wrong with how moderation is being handled. Now, let's turn to what the community has been saying because honestly, y'all have a lot to say about this. Many users took to social media to voice their opinions. One user said, well, what's going on at Fur Affinity is absolutely f It should not have happened. Let's also not jump to conspiracies stirred by someone who hasn't been on staff for the past decade. This person also suggested that this could simply be a case of a moderator making a bad call while the platform's runner, Skiggles, is in the hospital. What's more than likely going to happen, they said, is that Skiggles is going to get out of the hospital, look over the suspensions, and see that they were bunk, and reinstate the accounts. But not everyone agrees. Others pointed out that the timing of these bans feels a little too coincidental, saying things like, it really is a purge. If they're hitting SFW accounts like Jimma's, it happened right after Nier's passing, and them moving the goalposts on the GoFundMe to a higher value, very suspicious. Skickles responded directly saying, listen, I said what I know. Not sure what you want me to do from the hospital. Also, I'm the one managing the GoFundMe. I said I will review once I'm discharged. Thanks. It's worth noting that one of the individuals who brought up the issue initially reached out to Skiggles. They tweeted, I feel genuinely terrible about being a bother while you're recovering, and I deleted the retweet regarding what the old staffer said since it's inaccurate. Please rest and recover. Skiggles replied saying, Hey, you didn't have to do that. I hope I can clear things up once I'm home for you. This shows that while there's skepticism and frustration in the community, there's also understanding for the difficult position Skiggles is in. They're trying to manage a platform while dealing with personal health issues. Now, let's get into the speculation surrounding Fur Affinity's future. Is it possible that Fur Affinity is preparing for a sale? Well, Skiggles has denied this, saying FA is not for sale and there are no plans to sell it. The ex for speaking hasn't even been on staff for a decade and doesn't know the current goings on. So if Fur Affinity isn't up for sale, why are these sudden changes happening? Some in the community think this is about marketability. Platforms like Tumblr and Patreon have made similar moves before, where they cleaned up and sanitized content to appeal to investors. But if we take Skiggles at their word, the bans might be less about a sale and more about internal issues, such as moderation problems during their absence. So where does this leave us? Right now, Fur Affinity's future feels uncertain, and the community is left in the dark wondering what's going on. The GoFundMe showed just how much the community values this platform, and yet the recent bans have left many feeling alienated and frustrated. Whether Fur Affinity is dealing with a moderation blunder, a policy shift, or just a difficult transition, one thing is clear. Transparency is needed. The community deserves answers, and the platform owes it to the people who helped save it to be open about its direction. Let's keep this conversation going, and let's push for transparency and accountability. We need that in our community. Fur Affinity is our space, and we have a right to know what's happening with it. If this topic fires you up, please drop your thoughts in the comments section below. And hey, consider checking out my Patreon if you want to help support me in content like this. Together, we can shape the future of our community spaces. Stay safe, stay kind, and keep pushing for the answers we need. Bye!